Um, now we're going to look at the rest of the continuity issues with this function. So I've listed the intervals or the yeah the intervals where uh, f is continuous is continuous from negative three uh, negative infinity to negative three from negative three to four and from four to infinity positive infinity. Uh, so I want to look at two areas. I want to look at when x equals negative three. And I want to look at when x equals four. I'm going to choose to look at when x equals four first. So I'm going to take a limit. How do we do that? How do we look at areas that where the function is undefined? Well, we take limits. And I'm going to take a double side limit as x approaches 4. And I'm going to put it in factored form, the function. So I'm going to try to save time and space as much as possible. That's kind of it sounds interesting, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like a sci-fi movie or something. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, the limit as x approaches 4, and I look at the form. The form of this limit is 0 over 0, but I notice that it's in factored form, and we factored it earlier, so this should be no surprise, that I can cancel that common factor of x minus 4. Now I no longer have the indeterminate form. And in fact, we know that this is an equivalent function, x squared over x plus 3, as long as x does not equal 4, as we talked about earlier in the videos. So now we take the limit. I no longer have that indeterminate form, as I stated. Uh, 4 squared is 16. 4 plus 3 is 7. So this tells me that I have a hole at the point 4, 16 over 7. So now we're going to look at uh, x equals negative 3. And we're going to take uh, one-sided limits here. Um, so I'm going to approach negative 3 from the left side. And, and the reason why is because I noticed when I already had it in factored form, x plus 3 did not cancel. Uh, therefore, it's a non-removable discontinuity. This is a rational function. It's a way to determine that. Uh, therefore, and x equals negative 3 makes the denominator equal 0. So I'm not going to get, I'm going to get a, I'm not going to get 0 over 0. I'm going to get some kind of infinite limit. So that's why I did that. Uh, you can uh, leave x minus 4 in. You can cancel it. It's not going to make any difference in the uh, outcome of this limit. So x equals, I mean, the limit as x approaches negative 3 from the left. I'm going to look at the form. And this is going to tell me everything. Uh, on the In the numerator, I get uh, negative... Um, Negative 3 squared is a positive 9. Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. 9 times negative 7 is negative 63. And uh, on the bottom, I, of course, get 0 because negative 3 plus 3 is 0. But if I uh, look at, if I'm to the left of negative 3, that 0 is going to be uh, negative. Yes, and uh, since I left these factors in, that's why I'm pausing. Since I left these factors in and, and included this negative here, I'm going to have to go ahead and leave these factors in when, when including this. I, I would normally cancel it because it makes this little process a little easier. But anyway, I've already done it, so there. Um, when uh, x is to the left of negative 3, negative 3 minus 4 is a negative number. When x is to the left of negative 3, x plus 3 is a negative number. A negative times a negative is a positive, so we like to write that little positive symbol there. Uh, it's not coming up, is it? Uh, so I so I have the form negative 63 over 0 positive, which implies that the limit is negative infinity. Remember, a non-zero number over 0 implies, when you're taking limits, implies infinity. We have a ne negative we say that that limit is going to negative infinity. It really does not exist, but we can describe in which way it does not exist. And uh, we'll go ahead and take the limit as x approaches uh, negative 3 from the right now. I am going to leave the uh, x minus 4 out of there uh, just to show you what I was talking about. I, I, I like it a little better. So now um, I'm going to put a colon there. Uh, the form is... Uh, Negative 3 squared is 9. Uh, negative 3 
uh, plus three is zero. When I'm right to the right of negative three, I have a negative number a little, uh, when I add it to a positive three, it's going to be a uh, positive number. So a positive divided by a positive, this implies that the limit is, I have a non-zero number over zero, implies an infinite limit. Since it's a positive number over a positive number, I get a positive uh, infinity. So this tells me I have a vertical asymptote, and I'm just going to abbreviate here and maybe change out markers for the next vid, sorry. Uh, vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. You could have determined this uh, with uh, shortcuts for rational functions, but only rational, and this is the process you'd use every time. So that's it, and we'll go on to the next problem.